Hello my friends! Welcome to the 30 days rank push challenge, where I'm uploading a new ML guide for 30 days straight. We're on day 4 today. Here you have the full upload plan for the challenge. Many of you guys wanted to know what you can do when you're doomed once more with bad teammates. In situations like this, there are still many things you can do to influence the outcome of the game. And this 8 tips will hopefully help to improve your gameplay so much further that you can take the W much more often out of these depressing games. I want you to set yourself into the mindset that you are playing solo queue and that some minutes of the game are already played. Until now you have encountered that some of your teammates just run around like headless chickens. And you ask yourself now, what can I do with this mess to become victorious? First, the 5 shoutouts of today goes to d -Ray RF, Lee Akamaru, Daroid7, Khan Dang, I think I pronounced that wrong, and Smiley. If you want to have the chance to get a shoutout in the next video, I have a question today for you. I've tried to keep the video pace a bit slower today. Some of you commented that I am too fast, so I would like to hear your feedback on that topic. Do you like the slower pace of today's video, or you like the faster pace from the previous videos more? Last quick note, don't forget about the giveaway, I'm running for the challenge. The rules and all information you need, you will find in the description box below. Now, let's get into the meaty part. Ah, there's one more thing that I think I should mention. Most of these tips apply for any role you play, but there are also some that doesn't. Especially for the tank or support role. These rules are special ones anyway in my opinion. and need a very different mindset than a jungler or an MM for example. Now, let's start with tip number one. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Well, I have the feeling that no ML player is ever happy when playing. I know how difficult it can be sometimes. You're winning your lane easily, but anywhere else on the map, things are running downhill. The first and most important thing is to keep your positivity and your focus high. As long as the game is running, you're still able to win this. Many players tend to give up already once their team made some really bad plays, lose their focus and end up on the same bad level as their teammates. While playing any competitive game, your mindset makes such a huge difference in your own and your team's performance. What brings me to tip number two. Be a hobby psychologist. Yes, I mean that seriously. It can work wonders. As soon as you encounter that one of your teammates is about to give up, try everything possible to prevent this. This can start already in the drafting phase, where your teammates start pitching around against each other for whatever reason. Try to offer solutions for the problem. This is one of the reasons why I recommended you to be able to play any role. Many players only want to play their one specific role with their one specific hero. Let them do that. There is no point fighting it and in the end, these players are mostly even quite good in their role. It would be also really depressing if they wouldn't be. Next, if one of your teammates is making some bad plays, don't start flaming them. This is neither boosting your performance nor theirs. Also, when someone else starts flaming, try to calm them down. But also don't waste too much time on it. If you realize that it doesn't work, I would recommend to just turn off the chat and focus on the match. Last thing, if some of your teammates are doing good things, it can really help to make a positive comment about it. In Mobile Legends, it's not happens often that you play together with someone who is actually making positive comments about anything. This can be a huge confident boost, not only for that one player, but for the whole team as well. Also, when you're just being nice, the chance that your teammates are actually doing what you're telling them to do is so much higher than when you would just flame them. Simple psychology that also applies in real life. If you're nice to people, they tend much more often to help you out if you need their help. Tip number three. Be also a hobby analyst. Playing ML brings you the opportunity to explore so many scientific fields. It's amazing. After being a few minutes into the game, you should be able to make your first analysis of the situation. What's the situation on all three lanes? How's the farm difference from the team? Is one team already getting the upper hand? Are any players particularly good or bad in any team? I'm sure. There are many more questions you could ask yourself after a few minutes already. And there are certainly more the longer the game goes. Once you gathered all of this information, you can start to adjust your playstyle. Is one lane losing out? Tell your teammates to help out on that lane. Or go there for yourself, if possible. As a fighter on the XP lane, you're not supposed to run to the gold lane of course. Unless one of your teammates cover the XP lane for you. But that rarely happens in any solo queue game. If your team is losing out on farm, 
tell them to not get into any ganks. With a gold disadvantage, you will lose any gank. Only when your enemy makes a mistake, you can win the gank. But this is nothing you can count on. Also, make use of the quick chat. You can tell your teammates so many things in a really short time. This is how my new setup looks like. Also, as mentioned before, if your team doesn't listen, forget about it, keep your head down and apply. Tip number 4. Focus on the good players. It doesn't happen very often that one team have 5 pro players in their team, while the other one is packed with 5 noobs. So after realizing which players are good and which not, you should keep your focus on the good ones from both teams. If you realize that you have an awesome teammate, try to stick together with them. This will increase your chance of winning massive. On the other hand, you should also focus your skills on the good enemies. Mostly these are the players who also carry their team. So if you manage to take them out of the game, your bad teammates can fight against the bad enemies. There is a much higher chance that they will win this fight than against the good players. So, now is the question, how can you take out the good enemies? This depends on the current situation. If your team's farm is still leveled, you can focus them in a gank. But if your team falls behind them, there is only one possibility for you. Ambushes. That sounds easier than it is though. In many games, the opponent's good players also have to deal with their headless chickens. But sometimes, these good players are blessed with an awesome tank. And this is the worst nightmare. First, depending on the role, you know where to find the enemy. A fighter will stick most of the time on the XP lane and rotate to the turtle or mid. This is where you can try to take him out. If it's a jungler for example, you can be sure to catch him at the blue buff for example. Or you use the magic of the minimap and anticipate where he might show up next. Also shutting down an enemy gives you some nice extra gold. And since we are talking about gold now, we have… Tip number 5. Take what you can, give nothing back. Honestly, all of the other tips doesn't really matter if you fall behind and farm massively. You will be as useless as your teammates you're screaming at. So, what can you do to avoid it? First, when you're playing on the lane, there's a fairly easy trick. And I think many of you know this already. Last hitting the minions gives you extra XP and gold. It's only a small amount, but this really stacks up if you manage to last hit each and every one. That of course also means that you shouldn't miss your waves. Especially in the early game. Another thing I already mentioned in other videos, if you want to rotate, you should always try to clear your wave before. Only when there's absolutely no time for it, for example, there's a big fight next to you for the turtle, then you can leave the minions and turn the fight for the turtle into your favor. But afterwards, you go back to your lane and pick up the next minions. For most junglers it's important to get all jungle creeps, especially their buffs. This and kills are the main source for farm in the early game. So make sure as jungler to always keep your jungle clear. When your team starts feeding, it's also not the end of the world if you manage to stay on the same farm level as your fat opponent. How to do that? Farm, farm and most importantly, farm. Also as mentioned, you can try to shut down that player. Always monitor the current farm level of each player. And also check it before engaging against any enemy. If you engage against a highly underfarmed opponent, you maybe don't even need to use your ult against that player. And if a player has more gold than you, ambush him and give him the full blast of everything you have. When a player has massively more gold and XP, it's depending on which enemy the hero is using. A squishy one you can still take down, if you play a hero with burst damage for example. Otherwise, you should only ambush this enemy when you have the numbers advantage. Also keep in mind, if an hero is an early game or late game hero. This is something I'm going to talk detailly in the team composition video. Next we have tip number 6. Avoid being a noob. In many games, one single error can turn around the whole game. This you surely encountered already many times for yourself. So especially in a situation where you have to carry your team, you can't afford to make any mistakes. This is the reason why it's really easy for pro players to rank up despite their having the same noob teammates as you. They are almost making no mistakes. When you start to make mistakes, you will start to fall behind the enemy as well and then you're doomed. I'm giving you some examples. Saving your teammates for example can be a huge mistake. When he's out of position and getting ambushed by 3 enemies, just run. Your ally made a mistake and you can't fix it anymore. By trying to help, you will most likely die with him and make the whole situation 5 times worse than it is already. Next, avoid 2 risky plays. They can be rewarding but also go horribly wrong. In a game where you can't afford to lose any farm, 
don't even try it. You need to find the right balance in between when playing safe and when you should take a little risk. Because any engage, any push or taking the lord or the turtle is a little risk in the end. Next is running around without a plan. When I'm playing, I'm always checking the minimap to know what I have to do next. For this, I can recommend you the quiz video I made a couple of weeks ago. You can test your current skill level and receive a lot of tips from me. Tip number 7. Make a comeback. In order to make a comeback, you have to wait for the right moment. If you just carefully listened, I think you should be able to answer when is the best time to make a comeback. I will let you think for a moment. The best time to make a comeback is the point where the enemy has to take a risk. When they are pushing and entering a tower, it's a perfect time for an ambush. If they are taking the Lord, it's another perfect opportunity to turn around the game. And there are many ways to do it. One way is simply running around it. That will already stress out the enemy massively. Just make sure to not get catched. So I wouldn't do that with every hero. If no one is covering the Lord and the enemy has no hero who can take the Lord in no time, you can just wait until you can see that the Lord is pushing up your enemies. This he does mostly when he's already pretty low. So this is the time where you engage. Focus on the jungler, especially when your jungler is not around. You can also try to take the Lord when the enemy's jungler is down. When you have the numbers advantage and your jungler has retribution, it's a perfect chance to take it. Just make sure to either protect the jungler or if you are the jungler, stay alive. Your team needs your retribution to secure the Lord and the enemies will most likely show up and try to stop you. Also remember the longer the game goes, the easier it becomes to make a comeback. Theoretically. If you fall behind massively, it can also be a strategy to just stall the game as much as possible. Once the enemies have their full build, you're closing in on them each and every second. So by avoiding any ganks and focusing purely on defending, you can level the golden XP again. Also, your enemy could become desperate to finish the game. And that's the point where many mistakes are made. I know, this can be really difficult to implement in a solo queue game. But with my first tips, you can maybe convince your teammates. Otherwise, you have to search yourself a few good friends. This makes playing ML so much easier anyway. I'm already thinking of a way to connect you guys with each other. So you all have finally good teammates. Another tip for the communication would be to be able to write quickly on the phone. I'm for example really slow with it, since I'm hardly using any text messengers. On the PC on the other hand, I can write without even looking at the keyboard. The benefit of working since over 10 years in the IT business. Maybe I need to buy a keyboard for the phone, just for the communication in ML. Enough off topic. Once you've managed to make a comeback, it's time for tip number 8. Finish him. Whatever was the way that you have managed to make a comeback, don't waste any time. Now is the chance to win the game. Spam the attack button and write to finish it. So hopefully even the biggest headless chicken understands that it's not time to clear the small jungle camp now or that it's a good idea to split push now. All of you should go through the mid lane to the enemy's base. Maximum one of you should stay back to defend. If you have no turrets anymore for example. Also make sure none of your enemies have a rival. This is the super troll way of ending a game. Don't focus on the enemies in their base. Push the hell out of the turret button. All of you should focus on attacking the base. It doesn't matter if some of you die in the process, as long as the base HP drops to zero. The worst thing you can do is just running around and be scared of dying. It doesn't matter anyway, as long as the base gets destroyed. So please, focus the base. I can't tell you how many times I was the only one attacking the base, because all of my teammates were either scared to die or tried to fight the enemy and died obviously, because they still have more farm than you. So again, please focus the base and the misery you were in the last 15 to 20 minutes. Now, since you watched through the whole video, it's time for today's secret code to enter the giveaway another time. It is noobs. Again, all infos about the giveaway you will find in the description. Also, if you haven't had enough of me non-stop talking, check out either the quiz I've mentioned or the whole challenge playlist. See you over there.